Trey, Carolina, Kaylin Grijalva, Jay Small, who shoots a ton of threes, Stevie James, and Maurice Walton, the big man for the Red Hawks. For the runners, Sean Williams, Justin Edler Davis, Caleb Higgins, who's running the point these days, Justin McCall, and Sean Stiff, who's getting more and more minutes as we go, and he's down low, working it. Spin move, trying to go off last. Tough shot, but Stiff puts it in, and the runners with an early 5-0 lead. Actually, some good defense by Walt. He walled him off, but uh, Stiff still gets the two. No doubt the Red Hawks are going to try to get it down to the big fella, Maurice Walton, as you mentioned just a moment ago. That's their big guy. He's their all-everything, all-conference, all-world player. See if they can get it down to him now, but Stiff doing a great job. Look for Jay Small to launch threes all night long. A deep three right there off the mark from Carolina. And here come the runners. Small shot, double the threes of anyone on the Red Hawks team. McCall's going to get a foul call on the Red Hawks there. That's going to be on Stevie James. And that'll send Justin McCall to the line. Good look at Justin, the product out of Ridgeview High School. That one's off the mark. Well off the mark. Five nothing runners early. We're just a minute 35 into the game from the Arcardo Center here in Bakersfield, California. Again, Greg Kerr alongside Vance Palm. Second one rolls in. Two seniors, two juniors, and a sophomore in the starting lineup for Coach Woodford. Working against that runner's press right away. And Carolina, who missed a three earlier, gets some traffic here, and that's going to be on Higgins driving the lane. Greg, I ran into you earlier this week at another college contest, and you had told me, Vance, Caleb Higgins, love him. What a future. I really do. He's, he likes the big moment. He can really get his own shot. Talk about and, getting your own and, shot. And there again, told you Small will shoot the three, and he took one there off the mark, but the Red Hawks get the long offense rebound. Now it's Walton out top. Carolina launches a three. That's off the back iron. Rebound comes down to the runners. And here comes Higgins. As the runners push the pace a little bit. You'll see Higgins. He's got a great dribble drive where he can pull back and get some separation and get his own shot. Did it late in the game in their win over Boise State. Sean Stiff again working. Goes off glass. Misses the offensive rebound. Edler Davis, no good. Back up again. Now he pulls it out. Ball did not hit the rim. In all of that, the ball never touched iron. 10 on the shot clock. Well, Coach Woodford was talking, he was asking for that in the first 30 seconds of tip. He got it. You, you get a you get a, uh, a pick out there and the screen being set. Two officials looking at it. One saw it one way and one didn't. It's our third game together here tonight, uh, Greg, or this year so far. And I've seen, I've, we, I have seen Sean Stiff get away with a few of those, but right. they, I don't know who caught him. How about this look? Good ball movement, but the shot is off the mark by Stevie James, and here come the runners. Got the shot they wanted, though. Coach was even shouting yes the entire possession. And here's Higgins. That three is deep. Off the back of the iron. Red Hawks working it on the perimeter. Stevie James loses it in traffic. Here come the runners. McCall gives it back to Sean Williams. He launches the three and knocks it down. As they bring the ball across half court, Dolph Pinopio into the game for the runners. In fact, they had some wholesale changes here. Dudes in. Get to a minute. Another three, and that one knocked down by Small. Again, he will shoot threes. And Jay Small getting the Red Hawks on the board with that one. Jay Small, the only graduate student on the roster, so he can pull whenever. That's an automatic <laughs> green light when you're the graduate student. Ah, I love this. Oh, hit that, big boy. Old new look out here. Ivan Reynolds into the game. That's Cam Smith right there. Off the mark. Red Hawk goes down on the floor, and the Red Hawks get the rebound. Small oh, and going to get oh, some oh, content. 9-3, oh, oh. 15-52 left in the first half. Greg Kerr alongside Vance Palm. Red Hawks out of Mesa, Arizona. 
Reynolds, Trey Carolina working it on the runner's defense. Ivan Reynolds loves to play defense. That's the nice drive move. off the iron, good move, but nothing going there. And Walton with the putback. As Vance mentioned, the leading score for the run uh, for the Red Hawks, he gets the putback. So the Red Hawks have scored five straight. Floater from the baseline is good. David Walker bringing that one home. That's a beautiful shot. Just a nice floater. Doesn't always have to be a perfect set shot. Doesn't always have to come off a pick. Somebody gives you five or six feet. You can throw a nice little floater off the baseline and Walker saw it, didn't hesitate. Lob inside, nice block on the weak side. Walton going up, caught the, caught the pass, but Ivan Reynolds came from the weak side and came up with a timely block. You can see where Ben Yu is going to really try to get that ball to Walton. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Interesting. I'm going to say Walker held his guy. Not on David Walker. On the break. No, oh, see. Nice beautiful. pass inside to Walton, but the miss. Pinopio made him change his shot. And here come the runners. Nice ball movement, good defense, and then the foul. That's going to be on small. Good ball movement by the runners there. So Cameron Smith at the line for the runners. First one is good. A couple substitutions coming in. In fact, three of them for the Red Hogs. Tyler Fernstrom. Joined by Tanner Crawford. And Justin Parker. All into the game for the Red Hogs. Cam Smith. Second one is good. Could be, should be, might be the difference maker in February, March for these Roadrunners. Great recovery, nice job by Cam, look at that. But Opio with the defense was smart in that he didn't hip check. And Walker, a little out of control there, going up and under. Here comes Small, cross midcourt, gets it back. Again, he shot 36 threes in five games. <laughs> and we're gonna get a foul call as Panopio once again is around the ball. And the foul call on Tanner Crawford. We didn't have to go far to find Benedictine Mesa. He's from Mesa, Arizona. Okay, Greg, five starters, go. Five new. Caleb Higgins, well, we got the starters back in. Sean Williams. Sean Stiff, Justin McCall, and where's number five? I only see four of them. Where, where's the fifth guy? Who's inbound on the ball? Well, right there now. he is, Justin Elder Davis. Coach, you feeling so confident he's going four on five? I think they're going to try to work the ball, get the ball to the captain here, Justin Elder Davis, try to get him involved in some pick and roll, maybe. McCall almost got away with the travel there on the far side. And Williams working on the defender, trying to get some space. Higgins with a bigger guy on him. Got the shot he wanted, just off the iron. Higgins has been long on a couple shots. There, ooh, there's a look right there. Three from the corner is off the mark. Rebound by Edler Davis, and here comes Higgins. And that's gonna be on Justin McCall. Well, these officials had their pregame meeting. They've watched tape or they've just kind of shared notes. There's a couple of offensive fouls way out on the perimeter. That one's on the break that they called yeah, an offensive just, foul on. Just the kind of drive a coach nuts. Of course. Small from deep. And they're going to get a foul call here on the follow through here. And that's going to be a quick, another quick one on Justin McCall. Let's see if he got him, Greg. Let's see if he got him. I don't know if we'll get the replay here, but there's a couple of uh, boo birds over there that were real close to this that didn't like the call. Of course, they're real could have been fans. one. Of, could have been one of those landing spot things as opposed to contact. That's a good. That's a good. You know, good. Uh, good. Good mention there. 
So Ivan Reynolds is coming in. I'm sure it's for McCall, who picked up two quick fouls. And here it is. Tough thing to see there, but it looked like it was, it was pretty much left leg seemed to be right where Small was landing. So they got him more on the landing then. Boy, times have changed, huh? No doubt about that. It's a good look at Jay Small right there. Yeah, he's a tough, tough guy. We joked about him being the only graduate student on the team. And had the ultimate green light. Got a hit in Iowa. It's an important two or three minutes for the Roadrunners here. They need to make something. And Lotus Stitt's got a smaller man on him, certainly body-wise. And... Exactly what I was talking about. That's an important bucket right there. Reminds the Red Hawks whose gym they're in, where they go down a low, right. low post. He backed down Crawford, who's... Hello. Slimmer than most of them. Oh. Up. Higgins hey, with a nice alley-oop. Hey, hurry up, Justin. Four on five. Oh, unbelievable. Didn't even see that turnover. pass going inside. Justin oh. Parker just didn't see it. Look at Higgins. Hey, did you say you like that guy? And the runner lead is now nine at 17 to eight. Red Hawks had a chance there, just kind of threw it away. Runner's going with the trap right there. Out of control, I'm gonna be bailed out on a foul on Ivan Reynolds. Yeah, Coach McCall not happy. As things start to get a little discombobulated, a little hairy carry, you can't get drawn into that if you're the road runners. Yeah. You have to, you know, you have to be laying the rules down and you should have taken a charge. Yeah, Justin Parker was full tilt. I don't know if he could have slowed down. Knocks down the free throw. Parker, big guy. Trey, Trey Carolina back into the game for the Red Hawks. He's 6'5", he's gotta be probably 230, long. Can you believe this? First trip to the free throw line all season makes both, right? Brought them both home. 17-10 as Higgins brings it across, gives it to Edler Davis. Well, what a matchup that is right there. Edler Davis loves the short corner. That's his favorite shot. Runners back up by nine. Williams pressuring small yeah, on the outside. Superb matchup right there. I love it. Oh, there's a cut. Three. Almost got a shooter's bounce there. Coach Woodford looked back at his staff with his arms open like, who gave him the green light? Uh, we might have to Here go to the season-long stat sheets to see about Justin Parker shooting a three. Oh. Now, he's taking another, knock that one down. He does not care what you and I uh, think, Greg. No, no. What's crazy is that he's had, uh, he's over four from three-point line, now he's over five. But now we're gonna see the big fella come back in. Maurice Walton, their only All-American in the history of their program is coming back in. Along with Cameron Davis will be coming in as well. Small, long three off the iron. They just got nobody Short. underneath the rebound, right? You pull the trigger like that and zero guys are below the hoop. It has to go in. Well, you're hoping you get the long rebound. Back down low to Stiff. He's had his way down there. Again, working against a, if not smaller, thinner defender using his body. And uh, Tanner Crawford's asking out of the game right now. He pulled on his jersey. He'll be coming out pretty soon. And the runner lead is back up to nine at 21-12. There's a nice cut. And in traffic, Tyler Furstrom. Two defenders in his face. Knocks it down for the Red Hawks. It's back to seven. And this team, they have Pinocchio down in the corner down here, but I don't know that he's going to shoot it. Nice re-entry pass. And then, again, stiff from short. Your great curl alongside Vance Palm as CSU Bakersfield has a 21-14 lead on the Red Hawks of Benedictine Mesa. Goes inside the block. 
Goaltending call. Going to get goaltending called on the block by Ivan Reynolds. Coach Woodford all over the officials about the Roadrunners roughing up Trey Carolina down the far side on the break. Maurice Walton working it down low with the pass. Welcome to that Cardo Center, my man. In the basket to Cameron Davis, and it's a five-point game. Reynolds gets it up to Cam. And Cameron Smith puts it in from deep in the paint. The runners applying some backward pressure as they normally do. Davis bringing it across the timeline. Near steal, in fact, the steal by Davis. Oh, look at this fantastic play Beautiful right here. steal by Washington who gets it back. Great play by Cam Smith who saved the ball in bounds, and Washington, who initially tipped it, gets the reward at the other end with the dunk. The runner's lead is nine. They got the trap going on, and we're gonna get a foul call on Caleb Higgins. Calling it tight here, Vance. You know, Greg, I, I talked about Cameron Smith a few minutes ago, and I mean, we could pick a lot of runners that we could think are gonna make a difference in, in the early spring, but you look at that play, Cameron Smith, dives after the ball, bangs his elbow on the scorer's table, had the wherewithal to know that if his stomach hits the wood, he's gonna be out of bounds. Flung it forward, that's just such a huge play in December. When By the way, the runners with 18 fouls, to just four for the Red Hawks. Look at that play, what a great play there. That's just, you know, the crowd gets to see a big hammer dunk in the first half. Great work by our camera crew there. How about Coach Barnes standing there, arms crossed, chagrined that he's got his 350th win. Watch his 351st. Tonight. And you know why guys are diving in December, don't you? It's because of the guy you just talked about, Rod Barnes. Smith misses the jumper, but the rebound down to Washington and the runners reset. Shot clock at 15. Higgins working, got bumped a little bit. No, no whistle there. Back to Smith. And that one's going to be a reach in, and that's going to be on Trey Carolina. Still not going to the line yet. Our officials, Tim Marion, Klaus Endersat, Travis Schatzman. Guys, been around a long time. Good officials. And it's a clock situation. The clock had started. Right on cue, Greg. These cats don't miss a thing. The other night, my son was playing a VHS freshman game, and they didn't have the, the clock. The 24-second guy wasn't there yet. Or the 35-second guy wasn't there yet. <laughs> so I stepped in to do it. Yeah. Never been more nervous in my life. I've never been more nervous in my life. It's a lot of responsibility oh, when you don't, don't do it on the regular. Oh, I, yeah. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, I do this for a living, so to speak, and I... Oh, look at this. Nice shot by Cameron Smith, far side. Two quick buckets by Cam. I was sweating bullets trying to do that shot clock. <laughs> you didn't, like, elongate it when your son had the ball, did you? You know I did. <laughs> oh, hey, here we go. Nice block at the other end for the runners. Let's look for Ivan Reynolds down there in the corner, maybe to get him working that baseline a little bit. He's probably the fastest guy on the floor after Higgins. Rod Barnes barking out some... Play call here as Higgins has it near side up top. Jumper wall off the mark by Walker. It's just not what they're looking for at this point with all that time left in the shot clock. Yeah, I don't think that's what Coach Parsons is asking for, right? Good hands by Cameron Smith. And then the inside Walton is rejected once. Goes up a second time, blocked a second time. Shot clock at 14 as the Red Hawks retain possession. Another near steal, and there it is. Ivan Reynolds steals a three on one, the lob up top, and the finish. Cameron Smith giving it up to David Walker. And the runner lead their largest of the game at 12. You know, Coach Woodford from Ben U is asking for fouls on their big fella down there, Maurice Walton. But Walton really isn't getting off the ground. And another block shot. Just was exactly what I said. He's just not making it tough on the defense. And not much verticality there. And Ivan Reynolds there once again to show up with yet another block. He's filling the stat sheet in that line. A little bit of a push off there by Carolina. Gets the shot off, but it's no good. And here comes Higgins. We're at the 645 mark of the first half. Runners lead 29-17. 
Higgins pulling it out. Carolina sneaking up on him. But... Well, Coach Barnes is asking. He wants that strong right side over here, double high. There it is. Cam Smith asking for it, kicks it back out top. Walker moves. Gersfield with another deflection on defense, leading. And we get a travel here on Walton. Double clutch, but his feet were moving. It's Benedictine Mesa, or Ben Yu, as we will refer to him often. Runner's three point percentage, uh, three, one for eight, Greg, one for eight. 29-17, runners on top. Rod Barnes substituting liberally. Walker giving it over to Sean Williams, mixing up some of the rotations here as Justin Edler Davis fade away from the elbow, no good. And here come the Red Hawks in transition. Small, who will launch it from just about anywhere. Over to Trey Carolina. They've got their biggest guy. They're all American, way out top, top of the key, trying to set a screen from 30 feet away. Jalen Grijalva gives it up to Walton, who launches a deep three, knocks it in. Was that, was that aimed at me? Was that directed at me? <laughs> it might have been. Maurice Walton with the three. Man. The lead is down to six single digits, 29-20. Ryan Washington over to Justin McCall. Walker in traffic gives it up to Washington. Back out top, shot clock's at three. Long three for Sean Williams. Misses, rebound Washington. Oh, that was close. We're talking a millisecond by the time it bounced off the backboard and hit the rim. It may have even hit the backboard while there was no time left. That was close. Offensive rebound, Justin Edler Davis, but it doesn't go in, just hung on the rim. Fell off, and the runners will retain possession. Felt Pinopio comes back in. Sean Williams will take a seat. Sean Stith coming back into the game for the Rudders as well. And it looks like Sean Williams will stay on the floor. David Walker will come out. Sorry, partner. We talked in the pregame about Coach Woodward trying to find out where his team are. It will be and have the value of his team in their conference. Where does he stack up here? They're only down nine with 442 left in the first. Absolutely. And Justin McCall from 17 knocks that one down. I would tell, I would get, I would allow him to do that all night long. I'd never stop him. Trey Carolina bringing it across half court. Working on Williams. Driving the lane, goes up, blocked by Justin Edler Davis. But the ball went out of bounds on the baseline, so the Red Hawks will retain possession. That's the sixth block in the first half. Six blocks in the first half. It's a great stat line right there. Small, you know he will shoot, and he does. He turns and burns, Woo! knocks down the three, and the lead is down to eight. Small has nine, leading the way for the Red Hawks. Another offensive foul on the runners. That was on Sean Williams. I wish I could tell our crowd what happened, but I had a wall of coaches here, but I, so I couldn't see what happened. But as, we, as we usually do. It had to be some kind of an exchange. What are you looking for from the runners last four minutes, Vance? I mean, Frank, you got an eight-point lead. You're Rod Barnes. What are you, what are you looking for? If, well, am I Rod Barnes or Vance Palm? <laughs> yeah, I got to know, know it before I get in trouble. Or... Okay. All right, your Vance Paul. Run, 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 run. Go, 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 go. Let's let's get some stuff going here. Let's get some action going here. Nice pass inside. There you go. Somebody's listening to you, Coach. Let's go. Justin Edler Davis with the basket. Sean Williams with the great feed. Look, if you're the runners, wouldn't you want to go in against this team up by 20 at the half at least? There's a uh, one and done at the end for the Red Hawks again, and Williams comes down and knocks down a plus section of the ESPN app, the Big West on ESPN Plus. And the Red Hawks get a bucket from Tyler Fernstrom. A big bucket. And they're down by 10, and we're under three minutes to play. Runners' last two possessions have been very efficient. A two and a three. 
Dolph Panopio working his way, trying to get around Walton, who blocks that. And that might have gone off. Panopio, they're certainly asking for it. Nice block by Maurice Walton. Caleb Higgins coming in. <laughs> Shot clock's at 11. Game clock at 2:44. Coaches, I probably <clears throat> Coach Barnes or something like this will take a nice look at a nice look at a three. He'll take a nice three. And you know, when Maurice Walton walks by us, as we see McCall take the oh, shot off, man. in and out, off the rim. Rebound comes down to Walton. Walton's oh. got a little, almost turned that one over. Jalen Grijalva at the top. Yes, sir. Another three by the Red Hawks, and that one is good. Stevie James knocking that one down. The lead is down to seven. Anyway, Walton up close, you know, when he walks by us, man, he's got a little offensive lineman or tight end in his pass. He looks like, uh, remember Ali that used to play yes, about yes. five years ago? Yes. Looks, looks just like him. Good call. And we're going to get another foul on Sean Stiff. We're trying to get... Yeah, he reached behind him and grabbed him. Face down low. I saw it. Didn't think it was going to warrant a call, but I mean, that's the 10th foul of the Roadrunners. Yeah. I think he's just fighting for position there, posting up. Well, Walt, Walton's even saying, well, it's a maybe call. He's good. Well, he's, he's smiling. Stuff. He's yeah. smiling because he Absolutely. talked the refs into it. He they, talked to, you know. It may have been a little bit of an elbow, he said. I'm all American. How about this? Oh, look at this. Nice feed. Walton, who made a three recently, got that one underneath to Stevie James, who scored from distance. Stevie James. From MSU Billings. We're both familiar with that area. I worked in Billings. Pat Douglas, of course, came from Billings. Longtime runner's coach. And he's, you know, you take a player like Stevie James that comes from a conference up there. Defense heavy conference up there. There's a lot of quick, quick guys up there that play some serious D. He probably brings a lot to this ball club. We've got a five point game with 141 to go in the half. I know, partner. I know. They start, they slowed it down. They that's, slowed that's, it down. That's going to be a talk in the locker room. Williams. Off the mark, rebound and offensive board by Justin Edler Davis. Back out to Sean Williams. Gives it up to Caleb Higgins. If you're Coach Woodford, you love the slow pace. Love it. They get a hold here and pop a three. They're down two. And Higgins shoots the three. In and out, tip oh. by Edler Davis. Big bucket by the captain. Rebound is all about effort. Nice ball movement. We're going to get a charge call wow. on Grijalva. The captain came back with yeah, That's just back to back. Hey, you young players out there, you know my line, you young players. Huge tip in rebound to stretch it out to seven. Then he comes down and takes a charge. That's a, that's a captain right there. Right. Justin Edward Davis, hats off to you, brother. Turn the tide, Dave, and possibly in a five point lead with a bucket here. It could be nine, 10. We're under a minute. Runners can actually get two possessions out of this final minute if they work it. Nice hesitation move by Sean Williams, and he puts it off the glass, and the lead is back to nine. I am all for the Roadrunners taking it to the hoop the, the runners, entire game. And the Runners will get the ball one more time as Grahalf is working up top. Walton was asking for it down low. Instead, small, tough shot in traffic off the irons. Fight for the rebound. It's Walton. Oh. Who travels. He asked for a timeout, but they <laughs> travel call before the timeout. Boy, he's a smart player. He's a good natured guy. He's having fun. He's smiling. He's <laughs> well, he and Coach Barnes have been giving it to each other back and forth in a good natured, fun way, but he's a smart, smart guy. That big body of his was falling down. And as he was coming down, he tried to call a timeout, but those size 15s were both pointing up. <laughs> So we're under 20 seconds. Runners most likely taking the final shot here, you would imagine. They spread it out. Higgins working on Grijalva. They want to put it Sean up quick. Williams trying another rebound. three. Got it. And that five-point lead is now back to 12. Grijalva and one other player bending over here. Can't see his number right now. 
Take a look at it, and that is Stevie James into the lineup. First possession for the Red Hawks. Walton going to the hole, but the ball knocked out of bounds. They'll retain possession. Just underway, second half. Coaching staffs always want to see the first 90 seconds of the second half. Are they listening to our adjustments? Are they paying attention? Right now, Ben, you calls this a 15. They call the play number 15, and they want to get it to their big fellow, Walton. Good defense by Higgins. Counting down the shot clock there, and right before the shot clock expires, Carolina misses the baseline jumper. Here come the runners. And in transition, moving that ball like you want, Vance. They pull it back. But they took a good look. Oh, I know what Williams was thinking for a set. He thought for sure that Washington was going to cut towards the hoop. He, he, he was expecting Washington to make a little slash towards the glass, and it would have been an easy dunk. But the ball had already left his hand. We're a minute into the second half. Runners with that 12-point lead. They're going to try to get it to the ball. Out to Walton. Yep, that's the, the play, they call that play 15. Off the front iron, rebound comes down to Justin McCall, gives it up to Higgins. See, again, I, I'm a broken record or DVD or whatever you want to say in this era that, you know, if you're Coach Woodford and the Roadrunners are going to walk it up, they're completely fine with that. Stay close. Higgins takes a three. Off the iron, rebound comes down to the Red Hawks. So, Sean Stiff not starting in the second half. Got two fouls. He's got two fouls, but you think that's more about minutes. You know, still, still trying to, you know, get his wind. He's coming off the knee injury. I don't think so. I don't think so. He, you know, a lot of times Coach Barnes will make decisions, you know, based on what he sees and what his kind of vibe is and what right. he's getting from Sean. And here's Trey Carolina at the line, and the fans, their first opportunity to take home some Chick-fil-A if a visiting player misses two foul shots, but that one's good. To our ESPN audience yesterday, I'm listening to Greg Curtis nationally live stream sports show and he had a hard hard sports take on chick-fil-a and all we hear is you second shot no good the lead is 11 for the runners more on chick-fil-a <laughs> senior right here is where Brian Washington needs to be active. Either set a screen or bounce around that key, but don't use that big body and stand there. Or Maurice Walton's going to be able to just kind of float around that key right there. If you're the Roadrunners and you see your big fella Brian Washington at 6'6", 235, where's jersey number 15? He needs to be really active and work that Maurice Walton. And corner three was no good, but the rebound by the runners and the foul. Justin McCall hustling for the runners. They retain possession. Pass inside to Williams off the mark. Hey, there you go. So I'm talking back about by Washington. Washington. You're on your game here, partner. What I'm telling you, if Sean Stith is out for a reason, it, like, the, well, you know, if it's not the fouls and if it's not the conditioning, it's the fact that Brian Washington can make his mark tonight. Small left open, but misses the three. Rebound goes to Sean Williams. And here come the runners, 13-point lead. And look at Williams getting deep into the paint. Or to McCall. There's the sort of work you can see the athleticism of the runner guards. They can really get to where they want to get to. Nice hands by Walton as he knocked it off Higgins. Maybe a lot. His legs. And the pass miss oh, on the other end. That's transition defense right there, everybody. That's transition D. Turn the ball over, make it up by getting back. Hick and uh, Williams pulls it back. He'll run the point. By the way, I don't think I didn't catch you say I'm on my game tonight, Greg. Thanks. Only tonight. How about this? What a soft <laughs> touch. Shooters bounce. Oh, it's every night. I'm just, I, I'm just pointing out that we're in the moment. The runner's lead is 15. 
Trey Carolina, that's got to... Carolina got banged up on that, and so they gave him an extra 20 seconds to see if they was going to keep him in or make a sub, and they did sub in for him. Yeah, Williams running the point. Post up Back there, big fella. Cameron Smith off the mark. Washington with the rebound. Another look for the runners. Shot clock at 15. Cam Smith asking for it down low. Oh, that's special. Oh, shoot it. Look nice pass inside. Oh, goodness. Brian Washington. Brian Washington with the two-handed slam and a nice look by Sean Williams. So that's why Sean didn't shoot it. What a beautiful look. How nice is it to have interchangeable point guards and Higgins and Williams? Sizes and styles, if you will, between Sean Williams and Caleb Higgins. Cam. Nice steal, good help defense. Cam doing what he does, and watch, he'll be smart. He'll give it back to the point guard. I love that young man. Not to mention a third guy who can play the point, Dolph Canopio. And the miss there by Reynolds. Reynolds needs to throw that down. And that is small open, but that was off. We were in perfect line of sight there. That was off right the moment it left his hand. Pinopio. Go to the bucket. Go to the bucket. Throw it down. To Reynolds. Easy to. Run, 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 Greg. Up to 19 now. Largest lead of the game for the Roadrunners. I mentioned about the different styles of Caleb Higgins and... Sean Williams and Dolph Pinopio is a third different guy in terms of his style at the point guard as Stevie James knocks down a three. Remember back in about three, three, four years ago, you had Jarkel Joyner and Ricky Holden, two different kinds of guys, both right. deadly, both deadly, but just such different contract, contrasting styles that the defense just never had a, a chance to kind of get used to one. Same thing here. Foul on the offensive end for the runners. That was on Cameron Smith, the Columbino, through all the... Shot. I don't know if that was deflected or not, but first from put up a jumper. Yeah, they're going to give the ball to the Red Hawks. It, it, it was, was a deflection. It was deflected. And so the shot clock's at 17, and the Red Hawks will retain possession. You know, those guards, Jarkel Joyner was an assassin, and yet Ricky Holden was that slasher driver guy. Pass gets away and turnover, and Jack Schumann into the game. <laughs> Corrals it. There you go. Oh, good Nice, pass. good ball movement. Nice pass. Shot off the mark, but Schumann with the foot back, and he's fouled. Uh, I'm, on, I'm on the train tonight, the Brian Washington train. I'm telling you right now, he's just he's coming out right now. Dude Collum coming in for him. But he's Washington getting some love from his assistant coaches and his teammates out there kicking the ball around posting up a couple of dunks boy what a what a game like this won't do for a young man justin parker into the game for the red hawks as we take a look at jack schumann the transfer from colorado state lefty misses the foul shot but he gets his first two points of the game the runners lead is 18. Carolina in the key. Nice pass inside. Shot off the mark, however. Tanner Crawford a little strong on the shot from point blank range. Trey Carolina. He goes to the key with a ferocity. Number four, he came yeah. hard to that key. You're working your way up the ladder, you young players out there. Don't just dribble and go two feet with it. Get somewhere. Carolina does that. Nopio working the point. He'll take a shot if it's there. He's got a good jump shot. Jack Schumann, meanwhile, he's a lefty. He turns and misses from about five feet away. Jack was feeling it. Rahalva with the rebound, and now the Red Hawks. Try to get some momentum offensively. Pass inside, but that's going to go off the runners. I say it's about 60 more seconds before Jay Small goes back in. You don't have that aggressive shooter that's looking to pull the trigger out there. And when you're down by 18, somebody's got to drop these in. Crawford gives it back to Carolina. There's a three. Off the mark by Fernstrom. That one was in the front iron. Here comes Williams. 
he seems like he can get to his spot whenever he wants. We're going to get a foul on the... And it's going to be Cap. Roadrunners are Justin Hitler Davis over the back. That's what the Red Hawk staff was asking for, and they got it. As Cameron Davis comes back into the game for Ben Yu. Support pressure in the back. I don't want our viewers to think I disappear, but most of the time I'm over here listening to these coaches. How about this? Carolina losing control. Gives it up to Jack Schumann. Down, baby. Oh. Schumann is fouled on his way to the rim by Crawford. And that'll put Jack Schumann at the line to shoot, too. Gregory, I was hoping to see that left hand come back and tomahawk. <laughs> yeah, that's what he was hoping. Oh, Crawford got enough of it or enough of him to deny the dunk. I mean, don't kid yourself, everybody. Schumann is 6'7 and can get up. He's got big hops. We got Maurice Walton right in front of us, so we're going to have to listen for the swish because he's blocking out. Literally, that's off the iron. You hear that one. Maurice Walton. Haven't seen Walton in a while. Roadrunners have been stuck on 53. Well, Jack's missed a couple free throws, too. I know he wants to make this one. He's 0 for 2 from the stripe. Got that one. Pinopio applying the pressure on Davis. Yeah, you, Bruce Walton is just not moving down there. He's letting Dude McCall him just stand and kind of, oh boy. Wow. Anyway, oh. <laughs> The coaching staff was, that was a, is that a little Dirk Nowitzki there with that one-legged fadeaway? Coaching staff loving it. Justin Parker knocking it down. Got some contact there, but nothing called. Walt and Duke Collin. Sean Williams off the mark, but runners get the ball back. Good hustle as Edler Davis goes to the floor. And that one's going to be off of Schumann. Yeah, Coach Barnes is not going to be happy with nah. his point guard, Sean Williams. He's one on four, and he throws it at the ankles of a 6'7 guy, and there he goes. <laughs> Rod. David Walker back in the game. Sean. How long has uh, Jack Schumann uh, been in the uh, headband brigade? Oh, since day one. Has he always oh, worn yeah. a headband? Oh, yeah. It was just that hair I didn't notice. Under to pass over to Carolina. Looking inside to Walt, and Walt is asking him to rotate it. Here comes Davis in traffic, and uh, he had no idea another defender was there, and Walker comes up with the steal. Gives it up to Edler Davis, who loves that shot, decides to pull it out. Well, the lead now is comfortable. It's 17. So I can understand why they're not running and gunning, but... Justin McCall getting ready to check in for the runners. Shot clock's under 10. Floater from the baseline. Again, that's the second one David Walker's put up there, a little floater from the short corner. That gives you a sense of his awareness and what he can know and tell of who's around him and when to pull the trigger. I mean, that's a last second shot in a lot of ways. Yeah, Walton wants the ball. Open three there for Fernstrom, and he knocks that one down. Yeah, I'm surprised we haven't seen Small here, but if... And Dolph Finopio using his body against Carolina. Goes straight to the glass and scores. Dolph's first two points of the game. Walt now top. Gets it back. Bernstrom wanted it. He rotated the deflection there. Smart play. And we're going to get a timeout here. The runners on top, 58 to 40 with 10.26 to play. We'll be right back. And welcome back to the Icardo Center, Bakersfield, California. Greg Kerr alongside Vance Palm, man who once wore the runner uniform. Runners on top 58-40. We're approaching 
10 minute mark in the second half. Baseline official. Shot clock down to eight. Fernstrom with the ball out deep against Pinopio. Drive into the hole is Davis. Doesn't even draw iron. And here come the runners. Be patient here. Be patient. Be, there you go. Walker out to McCall. McCall to Pinopio at the top. A couple of Red Hawks coming back in, including. Jay Small has been on the bench Jay a Small. long time. Yeah, he has been. Hold up. Give it to him. Walker knocking down the jumper. <laughs> Showed his offensive game here tonight. A couple of floaters and that jumper right there. He turned around and told the runners, what? He told his bench, what? Walt now top against Column. Oh, oh. He's wide open in the bottom. And we're going to get a foul there and the bucket. And, and that should, that, Cam had to give up a foul. Cam Smith, Beano had to give up a, a foul. And I think he had just cheated out way too far. He was trying to do something out in the wing, and by the time he returns, there's no chance. Moise Walton's too big, too strong. Just a one-shot foul here. So this will not have any Chick-fil-A. I texted your producer last yesterday during the show when you guys were waxing eloquence, and I said, ask Greg about the home vault he has of Chick-fil-A cars. Yeah, I know. That's what he told me. You guys went off the air. You lucked out. See, Walton missed the free throw there. That had been a two-shot foul. The crowd would be going nuts. Those who don't know, if you miss two foul shots on the visiting team in a row in the second half, everyone gets Chick-fil-A. Dolph Pinopio misses the three. Rebound by Grijalva. That's going to be off Grijalva, so the runners will retain possession. As Brian Washington comes back into the game for Cameron Smith. Octavian Collum got away with a foul there. He just basically hacked the arm of Maurice Grijalva. Walton or whoever that was down there. Yeah, Grijalva had it. There's Collum right there working on Walton. Hold that, that one. It looked like if that doesn't go in, he may be in trouble. Pinopio puts it up and in in traffic. I want to date myself, but uh, is that, who, who went across the key there? Was that Washington? Who was that? He was doing a little Connie Hawkins with that ball. <laughs> Iceman. <laughs> He did a little ice Look him up, people. Well, Duke McCollum, I thought he may be in the doghouse with Rod doing yeah. that right there. That's a, I don't I don't know that that's his style, but you know Rod is getting up there in age. No, I'm only I'm only joking because we're the same age, and every, I I I I was telling him, say, Coach, I can't get on you about your age because you're going to tell everybody we're the same age. So I got to back it up. You got to be careful. So Vance, I'm going to tell everybody how old you are. I said, No, I don't do it. Pinopio finishes the three-point play. How about and this? And there's Walton with another three. Air ball. And that one will go out of bounds harmlessly. I'm of the belief that when your biggest, most impactful player, and in this case, an All-American, the first All-American ever in the school's history, is pulled out to behind the arc, and that's where he's going to make an impact, boy, it better work. If not, your team all of a sudden starts to feel like, wow, what other options do we have? And they're going to have to start gunning. And Justin McCall knocks down the 14-footer. They've also found a tough sledding down low, so... Walton's been banging all night long. He figured, I'll take one of these from outside. No one's hitting me. You better hit the rim. <laughs> you better. There's the three. Stevie James is putting together a pretty nice night. He's now in double figures with 11. Stagger! Stagger! Stagger Chase! Pinopio gets it to... McCall, McCall pulls it back out. There's Washington right there. Corner for Walker off the there back iron. Good. Rebound by Washington. Gets it to Dude Column who drives straight to the bucket. Tips in his own miss. Dude on the board with two. And that's going to be a mismatch. If Justin Parker is going to be asked to cover Dude McCollum, cover Dude McCollum, that's going to be a rough seven and a half. Walton spit pure on both after missing his first one about a couple minutes ago. He makes both there. 68-47, a 21-point lead for the runners. The only substitution change is Schumann's in. Yes. 
Runners, all five players basically out on the perimeter. McCollum brings it into the key, gets the bucket and the foul. Yeah, if you coach Woodford, you just don't want him getting that far into the key. I mean, if he's not, if he's not going to play with his back to the basket, call him. He's going to come out on the wing and take a pass out there. You, the last thing you want as a head coach is to allow someone like Dude Collum to take three steps and be in the middle of the key. By then, it's too late. Good look at Rod Barnes there for a moment. Collum misses and almost got his own rebound. 70-47 with just over seven minutes to play. Jalen Grijalva with the ball for the Red Hawks. That's Down low to Walton, good pass. Yep. And, and that's when Walt Walton's using his feet, using his body, get, making a difficult angle. There's Colum again. <laughs> a little big man battle going on, Greg, a big man battle. Yeah. Walton, by the way, moving into double digits with that last bucket. Now Walton wants it down low again. Now he's going to ask for it. Might get it here. Stevie James kicks it out. No foul called down there. A lot of contact. This is Grijalva. And he knocks down a three. Got a flop warning on the runners. So the lead is now 20. As the Red Hawks have converted last couple trips down, the latest a three by Grijalva. Sit, 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 sit. Colum, who has back-to-back -back baskets, working again. That one's deflected, good defense. Go, go, go. Tanner Crawford with the block right there. And Fade away once again. Justin Parker just loves that shot from anywhere on the floor. That's his go-to move. I mean, Parker knocks it down. You talk about a 6'6 senior from Detroit. He just got gobs and gobs of playing time in his life. Get a foul call on Jay Small right there. Mid-Atlantic Christian University, hometown of Detroit. He loves the fade away. So Justin Parker. Trey Carolina back into the game for Ben U. Walker goes to the line. So Ben U's down 18 with 540. Haven't seen them try to even press the Roadrunners once. And I know that's a tall task with all that fantastic guard play the Roadrunners have, but here's an opportunity. We talked about it in the pregame, Greg. We talked about Coach Woodford. What is his mindset tonight? His mindset is, hey, where are we going to be in our in our conference? Where are we going to be in this PAC conference with regards to our competitors? We know we're up against the D1 Big West team, but where are we going to be? And then second of all, he's asking his players, how tough are you? How tough can you be? Right? You know, I think, look at the Roadrunners are, you know, coming out in a little bit of a soft press. So why wouldn't Coach Woodford and his team maybe, maybe here in the last five and a half start thinking about some pressure? Here you go. He's got help if he needs it. Throw it up there. There you Washington's go. Washington with the steal, and he gives it up. And the schools, i got to be honest. Either way. The runners again, full court pressure. Watch Carolina. Carolina gets it across. He's a blur. Justin Parker, he's not close enough to fade away, but he will. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he is. We now got another foul call. That's going to be on Bino. And now he's getting it's another. He didn't even know it was on him. Brings a smile from Rod Barnes. One so one and one means you can't get Chick-fil-A here because you have to miss two in a row. And if you miss the first, there is no second. That one looked good. Justin Parker knocking that one down. Quick mention that David Walker's now in double digits for the runners I mean, with you, 11. You're already in our local Elias Hall of Fame, but if you weren't, and I had anything to do with your speech, I would say forget about the 30 plus years of being the dean of local sports. If you want a breakdown on 
the Chick-fil-A nerve-wracking free throws. I just, I'm just trying to get him to sponsor the radio show. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. <laughs> and Walker, who My again man. has 11, goes up in traffic, doesn't get in the bucket. I'm dead. The whole show's <laughs> over for me now. That was fantastic. And we're going to get an offensive foul called Ooh. on Parker. Parker gets called well, for the you know, o. He's been effective with the fadeaway, but... Boy, that was close. That was close. Parker couldn't believe it. That was a close one. I think he's in agreement with Frank Woodford, his head coach, as Dolph Finopio brings it up against Carolina. Yep, and, and we're going to get a foul call. This time, I think it's going to be on the Red Hawks. I don't. That one's oh, on, it is. It is. It's, it's on Stevie be, James. Stevie James That'll put Cameron Smith at line. Bino. He has eight points, so he can join the double-digit club with a couple free throws. Greg, do call him back in the game. A week from tomorrow night, a week from tomorrow night, you and I are going to be here. The Vandals are coming in. Saw them play Long Beach State a couple weeks ago on TV. Another Big West member. Idaho and the Roadrunners have had some legendary, legendary games of late. Then the Runners hit the road for a couple interesting ones. Abilene Christian in Colorado. And then they come home against the Dartmouth team that beat Georgetown. Well, they're Abilene Christian, then they're at Colorado. Right. Both of those road games, and then back home against Dartmouth before they open Big West Conference play. I think that's the 30th against Fullerton. Yeah, and then New Year's night, Long Beach State, so I'm getting excited about those. As soon as Hicardo Center start getting packed. Outside of Carolina. Loose Roadrunner defense. To Parker. Look at this Roadrunner defense. Inside to Stevie James. It's all Roadrunner D right there. Good job, boys. Good job. Great rotations, great closeouts. We're hitting the four-minute mark, and there's a corner three off the mark by Ivan Reynolds. Boy, that was a quick pull. We have not seen, by the way, Sean Stiff in the second half. Nope. We're hoping that's just tough. We'll see. Coach Wood Woodford emptying his bench for the final 350. some of the names as they become Michael Briggs available as Pinopio brings it across after getting a stern talking to from Rod Barnes during that timeout. Dude Column is fouled right there on the cut through. Jink Isindui is in. Oh, Incendio. It's like Isindui the way they have right. it here. What's Kushan thinking? Yeah, you know, earlier we saw Coach Barnes at the at the timeout getting on Pinopio. And it, it, it's it's a rare thing when you see a coach get that specific with a player when you're up 25, but he had to make the point. Pinopio threw the ball down in the corner to Ivan Reynolds, and there was no one on Ivan. So what would you do if you're Ivan, Greg? Hey, the point guard threw me the ball in the corner. Knocking down the jump. I'm putting the shot up. But Rod <laughs> did not, that, that's not how he wanted the offense to get started. And he said, what are you doing throwing the ball to the corner? Pinopio looked at it because he's wide open. So you can tell a lot of teaching going on from Coach Barnes, as always. As much as he likes Dolph Pinopio, he's got to give it to him. Runner's still applying the pressure. We've got five guys in here getting their first minutes of the game. Well, I should say four. Tanner Crawford's out there. So if you ever wanted Chick-fil-A, this might be the time. Shot's got to go up. Corner three right there off the iron. Foul's going to be called Rebound on. comes down to the runners. That was Walker. Jay Alstrom taking that shot. Yeah, you, to your point, Greg, you get these Benue Redhawks that haven't seen the floor all night. They come in, and they're down a big chunk of points, but they're still getting that fierce roadrunner defense. They're thinking, hey, man, are these guys going to take a little, take off a little bit? Or are they going to back away? No dice. And this is Jank Easton Dewey making the first. Dewey, another Turkish player. 
Second one is pure. 79-59, straight up 20 point lead for the runners. We're hitting the three minute mark. Doubt they get to the century. <laughs> that would be quite an accomplishment as good column misses right there. Rebound comes down to the Red Hawks. Michael Briggs with that rebound. One of the jumpers off the mark. Here come the runners. Pinopio giving it up to Reynolds back to Dude Collum. Oh, very nice. The transition, the runners, an easy two. Very nice. Another turnover here by the Red Hawks. Up top and the one-handed throwdown by David Walker. What a pass. David Walker with just the one-handed jam. Another turnover and here comes Jack Schumann. And another easy two. Ivan Reynolds. And I think Greg Woodford wants a timeout and he wants a full timeout. And so we'll give him one at 85-59 with 2.09 to play. And we'll be right back from the Icardo Center. And welcome back to the Icardo Center, Bakersfield, California. Greg Kerr alongside Vance Baum. You know, good players never quit playing. Good coaches never quit coaching. Coach Woodford there called a timeout. And he's, to your point, he's got four out of the five out there that haven't seen a lot of action tonight. And to him, that's no excuse. He told him, he called the timeout, said, look, calm down, calm down. You're on the floor for a reason, calm down. We're gonna, you know, they're, now they're close to getting, going down by 30, Greg, and they've hovered around that 19, 20 point right there. We talked about this in the pregame. He wants to see where the value of his team and his conference is. How deep is my bench? When he puts four guys out there that make four turnovers in a row, he's gotta call a timeout. Calm down, fellas. And Crawford right here, the only, and he tipped, but he was hanging onto the rim when he put that one in. The only player with playing time still in the game. But again, that was offensive goaltending on Crawford. Looked pretty good, though. Step up! Step up! It's Pinopio giving it up to Walker, who's going straight to the basket. That one's blocked by Crawford, but he's going to get a foul call. But it wasn't called on Crawford, though. Crawford had the block. Oh, they're going to say that was Ensign on Dewey. Jake Ensign <laughs> Dewey. So Walker at the line. Shoot two. Coach Woodford looked over at us as if we have something to do with it. He also knew who the foul was on. It wasn't on Ensign Dewey, and Ensign Dewey's looking over him. I don't know if he's speaking in Turkish, but Coach, that wasn't on me. <laughs> Walker makes the first, misses the second. Dude Ooh. Callum tries to get the loose ball. Actually goes off the Red Hawks, so the runners will retain possession. 86-59 with 128 to play, 20 on the shot clock. And Pinopio inbounding the ball. We're gonna get another whistle. Switch it, Jay. Jay, just switch it then. Just switch it then. So Jay Alstrom right now being told by Coach Woodford, you can hear it in our microphone that make the switch down there on the baseline inbound pass. As long as they don't get a layup, go ahead and make the switch, no problem. But you know, don't give them a two-footer, but please don't grab another foul and put the Roadrunners on the line. Alstrom, a sophomore out of Boise, Idaho. Jack Schumann misses the free throw. What's with Jack tonight? I don't know. He's not going to like one for four from the stripe. This is as pure as a form as you're going to get. Second one goes down. Runners have an opportunity to hold them here and get it to 30. Could be. What's it going to be? Ooh. Entry pass inside deflected. Runners extending their defense as they have pretty much all night long. Coach Woodford wanted these guys to calm down, just calm down. Let's see what, what they do. It's a force. Locked there by Dude Collum and runners with a minute to play. But with the shot clock where it is, they'll need to take a shot and they might get it to 30. Run, 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 run. 
Canopio driving left side of the lane, misses that one. Rebound comes down to the Red Hawks. Final seconds. Loader off glass right there, no good. Still, shot clock difference. They may have to put one up. See what Rob Barnes' philosophy is on this. Certainly, they don't need to. Uh, about an eight second differential. But I'm fixated on a 30 point win. Pinopio driving. No foul call. Schumann with it. Oh. Off iron. 12 seconds to play. And we're not going to get a shot here. I'll do it. Frank Woodford told his guys to pull it back. And that's going to do it.